Hey everyone, Muckluck here with a new player's guide on Hades. Meant to give you a stronger start with everything I wish I had known, starting out with as few spoilers as possible. Controls. Hades drops you right into it on your first escape attempt with the sword. You will quickly learn that every weapon has an attack, a power attack, a dash strike, a special, and your own cast. Feel free to rebind these to different controls if you need to. I know I did. You will soon have an area where you can practice these moves without danger with the help of your friendly neighborhood Skelly. So let me have it. Give me everything you got. Talk to everyone you can between every outing. Everyone has their own dialogue, feedback, tips, stories, quests, and sometimes gifts. Look for people with things to say before you leave again. The Wretched Broker offers a trade of various currencies. The bottom option is a limited time offer. Check to see if it is something that you are interested in between each run. When you are on a run, you will have to choose what rooms to enter. Let's go over what each of these entails so you know what you're getting and what you are giving up. Darkness is kept with you after the run is over. Its primary use is upgrades at the mirror in your room. These improvements add up and help you on your future runs. Note, there is a swap talent button to the left of many of the options that is easily missed. Make sure you explore all your options on the mirror. Keys. These are also kept after runs are over and can be used to unlock additional talents on the mirror, reset your mirror allowing you to redistribute your darkness, or unlock weapons you have not yet unlocked. Gemstones. Primarily used at the House Contractor, once unlocked allows you to buy various upgrades around the Underworld. Some actively help with runs, such as rest areas, or gold urns that Link himself would drool to see. Others are merely cosmetic. Make sure to get the ones that will help your journey first. Gold, aka Charon's Obel. This is only used within each run itself. All gold is lost when you return to town. So, for example, if you are about to enter a boss fight and you are at a shop, it is sometimes wise to spend what you can to increase your chances. The bag icon is the shop to spend said gold. Diamonds, dropped from the second boss under certain conditions, used in the same way as gemstones at the contractor for different upgrades or cosmetic changes to the world. Titan's blood, from the first and final bosses of your escape attempts, this can be used to feed your weapons and unlock additional upgrades for them. To list a single one as an example, the Shield of Chaos throws a copy of itself when you perform a special after a bull rush. But, after consuming enough Titan's blood, it throws five shields instead. Nectar. Everyone you will ever meet seems to love this stuff. You are often given the option to gift someone you are speaking with nectar if you have some. Tip. Give everyone one nectar before giving one person multiple nectars. Most beings will give you a gift in return for the first nectar given to them. In the case of the gods, you will get an artifact that forces them to be the first one you meet when you start a new run. Eventually, you will unlock the artifact cabinet, which allows you to change artifacts after each major boss, allowing you much more potential customization of the rewards you receive on your runs. So if you get a favorite god early, give them one of your very first nectars, and give another to Skelly for a strong early game. I'll leave the rest of the artifacts up to you to discover. Ambrosia. From the third boss, this is nectar to the 10th power squared. If you give someone enough nectars, they will start wanting the good stuff. This is the good stuff. Don't underestimate fishing. Although it seems odd in this action-packed game, it is incredibly profitable. Often, catching a fish is worth twice that of clearing a room. Rejoice when you see a fishing spot, or hear it, it makes a sound, and feel terrible when you fail to catch it. Bring the fishes to the chef in the lounge. Engineering Duo Boons Although it isn't 100%, you can often force rare boon choices to pop up called Duo Boons. Once you have the codex and the boon list unlocked, check them out. Go to a god's boon list and scroll to the bottom and you will see Duo Boons that require having a boon from two different gods before it will possibly pop up. One of my personal favorites is Stubborn Roots from Demeter and Athena, giving me life regeneration while I'm on my last life, letting me live far longer. Find some juicy combinations to shoot for. Dual Boon Rooms. Not the same as Duo Boons. These rooms have two gods, and you have to make a choice. Pick one, 
make the other mad. If you survive their wrath, you will get one of their boons as well. So, two boons for one room, but very dangerous. A Chaos Gate looks like this and will cost you hit points to enter it. You will get a choice of negative effects that will hinder you for a time, but then become a very powerful positive effect after they wear off, such as what is shown here. Boons. A boon room's icon will change depending on whose boon it is. Zeus is the lightning bolt, Aphrodite is the heart, etc. Also, the tiny skull icon on the door means it is a mini-boss room. Daedalus Hammer. The hammer will upgrade the weapon itself you are wielding, which means it will have different offers based on the weapon you are holding each run. In my opinion, always go hammer. You will see two on most of your runs. Don't pass them up. They can turn the shield throw into air hockey, the gun into a rocket launcher shotgun, and dozens and dozens of other amazing combinations. Erebus Gates. Available after unlocking at the gem broker and meeting some requirements. Erebus Gates are deceptively simple. Double reward if you take zero damage, no reward if you take any damage. For example, two levels of a palm, or 50 health instead of 25 if it is a centaur heart. When deciding on a weapon to bring on a run, if you see this darkness buff, you will earn more income on that run if you use that weapon. Got a god offering you boons and don't like any of the choices? Get the rarest one. You will sometimes have the option to cleanse a boon, basically sell it, and the rarer it is, the higher its gold value. You can sell boons when you find this red well in your travels. Faded Choice. If you see the Faded Choice icon next to a boon, that means you have never taken that boon in the past. By taking all of the Faded Choices, you can finish certain achievements, which are viewable from the book in your room. These are worth doing, as they generally give large payouts, such as many diamonds or a huge pile of gems. Centaur Hearts. This icon means that clearing this room will raise your maximum health by 25. Palm of Power. These let you choose one of your current boons to level up. Palm Slice. Same as a palm, but random. You don't get to choose. In trade, it is usually far cheaper to obtain. Leveling Boons. When you level a boon up using a palm or by other means that you will find in your travels, they will get a bit better. Typically, any numbers on the boon will increase, which can mean more damage done or longer duration of effect. Boon Rarity. Similar to the boons level, but another way for it to grow in strength. You will randomly be offered boons of better rarities, and there are also a few ways to increase the rarity of boons, which vastly increases their strength. For example, Demeter has a boon called Rare Crop that will have some of your other boons increase in rarity every few rooms you pass, and they will cap out at heroic rarity before the end of the run. Ultra rarely, you may find legendary boons, which are in a league of their own. The exclamation point is an NPC unique to each quadrant of the game. For example, if you see the exclamation point room before the first boss on multiple runs, it will always be the same individual. Hey, Prince. Well of Charon is the purple well and allows you to make some minor purchases. Examples include bonus damage for the next few rooms, four spawn a fishing note ahead, a small heal, and many other possibilities. Traps and environmental effects work on enemies. You can knock enemies onto spike traps or into lava to kill them. Wall slam. Knocking an enemy into a wall will do increased damage. Body slam. Knocking an enemy into another enemy will do increased damage. Cornered. Knocking an enemy into two walls does even more damage. You can destroy most projectiles by attacking them. This is easily noticeable when firing spreads of arrows or other projectiles of your own, as yours will tear through enemy shots with some exceptions. Hitting an enemy in the back does bonus damage. Armored enemies have a yellow health bar and are not easily interrupted until that bar is broken. Use caution when fighting them. You may be offered a god's call when you are offered their boons. This will give you a god gauge, which fills with power when you deal or take damage. Using the call when it passes one of the markers will perform an effect based on the god or goddess. In most cases, it is better to wait for the gauge to be 100% full before using it for a much stronger effect. However, the gauge empties between each room. So if you are almost done with a room, feel free to burn whatever you have built up on the god gauge immediately. Treasure chest, full of dad's darkness gems, gold, or health, the amount decreases until you clear the last guardian. The faster you kill, the more you get. And finally, want to romance someone? If you think you've got a chance, give them enough nectar and ambrosia to blot out the sun and maybe, just maybe, see the sparks fly. You're being very nice to me and that makes me 
suspicious, understand? <laughs> so you want more of that, you keep this up. <laughs> <laughs> That's all for today. I hope you enjoy Hades as much as I have, and if you like this video, please consider hitting the like button to help us out with the YouTube algorithm, and subscribe for more similar content. Happy escaping! Last time.